Hey everyone, this is Corsair with AMV Log, now co-produced by Shin and Replay. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Today we have an exciting tutorial. This is the beginner's guide to using Sony Vegas and After Effects together. Now, if you're a seasoned After Effects user, this is probably not the video for you. But if you're a beginner trying to learn how to use After Effects from the very beginning, then you might want to stick around a little longer. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get the software that you'll be editing with. Uh, if you don't already have Sony Vegas and Adobe After Effects installed, I suggest you uh, retrieve it by any means that you deem acceptable. Uh, that said, um, I'm assuming that most people here already know how to use Sony Vegas. Uh, here I have uh, my timeline and I just have some clips that I spliced together. Uh, nothing exciting is really going on. Now what you want to do is you'll want to get all of this footage into After Effects and because we're noobs and we don't use Premiere, uh, you'll have to render it. So what I would typically do is highlight my workspace, go to File, Render As, and I'll render it as an AVI. And as you can see, I already have it rendered. I've titled it Sample Clip, but I'll usually render it as an uncompressed AVI, just so that way I don't lose any quality as I'm transitioning from Sony Vegas to After Effects. Uh, you can see my settings here. Uh, it's just 1280 by 720, 23.97 frames per second. The video format is uncompressed. And I choose to leave the audio out. So then I would save it. Uh, I've already saved it as sample clip, but save it as anything you like. And then after that's done rendering, let's say I hit the render button and all the magic happened, I would go to file, render as, and then I would want the audio. So here I've chosen MP3 audio, highest quality VBR stereo, and then you could just name it anything you want. I've called mine sample audio. So after all that is said and done, you should have two files, sample audio, sample clip. What you'll want to do now from the very start is open up After Effects. Now one thing people need to realize is that um, when I'm working with After Effects, I like to use it as a post-production tool. First of all, you don't see me dropping whole episodes into this program and cutting layers. That's not really how After Effects was intended to be used. As you can see, all of my editing is done in Vegas. In fact, I'm pretty much only using After Effects for effects, hence the name After Effects. Typically when I'm working on an AMV, which is about three to four minutes long, I will work on 15 to 30 second segments in After Effects and then just compile all these compositions at the very end. So with that said, we go to After Effects. You'll want to go to File and Import. You can import multiple files or you could just import file. Either are fine. And you'll see we have sample clip and sample audio. We'll want both of these. So in this project window, we have our sample audio and our sample clip. Uh, render cube might not show up on your screen, but for now you can hit none. This is going to be your empty timeline. You can take your sample clip.avi and just drag it down. And here you go, now you have your video clip. Now, unlike Vegas, um, playback is not as simple as in After Effects. Usually I'm taking my cursor and dragging this slider bar uh, around the timeline. You'll want to drag down your audio, and if you've rendered it correctly, it should have lined up perfectly with your uh, footage. And pretty much what we have now in After Effects is a duplicate of our Sony Vegas timeline all in two layers. So now we'll talk about how we can start using effects and all of these different techniques in After Effects. First of all, we'll talk about previewing your video clips. Now, you see these yellow tabs? Whatever area on the timeline is highlighted is what will be previewed when I hit RAM Preview. Now, if I preview by hitting this play button, sure it'll play through, but it doesn't come with audio. What you'll usually want to do is hit this play button that says a RAM preview. After a short render time, maybe about 10 seconds, uh, the entire segment that's highlighted between these two yellow bars will preview. All right, so now we're gonna dive into the properties of each layer. Now, you can look at your music 
file here, if you hit these arrows, little drop down windows will appear. You can look at the waveform. This is the same thing you would see as if you were in Sony Vegas, but other than that, I usually don't need to touch the music. Now for the footage, you have different transform properties. You have anchor, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. More than likely, you'll be using things like position. Uh, position is what will change literally the position of the entire clip. Scale is the size. Opacity is just how transparent it is and rotation is self-explanatory. You don't always need to hit these arrows. Um, some great ways to quickly access any of these properties is just choose your layer and click P for position and the position properties will appear. Then you can alter the position either by putting your cursor over the numbers and sliding it left and right, or you can type in the actual position you want if you need to be precise. Your position can also change just by clicking on the clip in the preview window above. As you can see, I have this small rectangle outlined around the clip. If I click the clip and drag, the clip will move with my cursor. And as you can see, as I'm moving the clip, the position is also changing. Other hotkeys include S for scale. Now I can change the size. T for opacity. R for rotation and A for anchor point. Another thing we'll look at is the motion blur and 3D properties. Um, as you can see, After Effects has a well-built motion blur uh, into the program. You can tick this button right here to put motion blur on the clip, and then you can click this button to enable motion blur for previews. Now, if you wanna see motion blur in action, you can create a position keyframe Fast forward a bit, create a new position keyframe. And as you can see, there's this blur that happens as the clip is moving. That said, we should probably talk about keyframes. Now, you should know keyframes from Sony Vegas. A keyframe is just the properties of that transformation at that time code. And then if you change to another time code and you have a different keyframe, and the properties do change, the program will do what it takes to achieve those properties. That was a mouthful. Here's an easy way to look at it. I have position, right now it's in the default position. To use keyframes in After Effects, you need to hit the stopwatch first. This creates a little yellow diamond where you're at. This says at one second and 23 frames, I want to be at position 640 and 360. If I fast forward, say, this many frames and I'm here and I say hey I want the position to be here for some random reason between these two keyframes the clip will slide according to what you've defined it to be and you can use keyframes for anything um, if I change the scale I hit the stopwatch to start and let's say I want it to get smaller now between these two keyframes you can see the clip is getting smaller it's simple as that You'll find that as you work with more effects, you'll be working with tons of keyframes. So I suggest you get used to this process. To open up multiple properties, you can hold down on shift and hit any other property you want to open. Right now, I have scale open. If I hold down on shift and hit P, I could pull up the position and the scale. So if I wanted to do something with both of them at the same time here, I could easily look at both of the properties as I'm working with it. Now I don't know when you would ever be using an effect similar to this. You could, but this is just for an example. So now you should know how to pull up the properties, use keyframes, turn on motion blur, and that's just the basics. We haven't even gotten to anything in depth yet. Uh, we're gonna talk really quick about 3D. Um, you see this three-dimensional cube? It says 3D layer. If you click the empty box below it, you will be able to turn your clip into a 3D layer. Now that does sound a little intimidating, but let me explain. This entire time we've been working in a 2D realm, but now we can work in a 3D realm. I'll show you this by the rotation. So I click my clip and I hit R and I pull up the rotation properties. There's X, Y, and Z rotation. Z rotation is the one we're all used to, nothing special there. If I hit the Y rotation, my clip will begin to rotate in a way where the left side of the clip is in the background and the right side of the clip is in the foreground. This is what denotes this clip as a 3D layer. You can do the same with the X rotation and you can do a lot of interesting effects later on uh, when we talk about 
cameras and other things like that. But for the time being, you may not need 3D. For now, you can just stick to 2D. You don't have to go nuts yet. And now we'll just talk about some important uh, tools that you might need. Uh, if I'm editing this clip and I'm trying to add effects per se, um, let's say I want to divide this layer into two layers. Um, sometimes it helps, makes me a little more organized. Uh, after I select the clip, I can press Control shift d Now I have two layers. Now you could use these layers for whatever means you need necessary. Uh, let's say I wanted to overlay this clip over the clip below it. You would only see the layer that's on top. That's the way layers work. The layer on top will take precedence over the layer below it. If I hit T for the opacity options, I can drag this down and I just get that transparent effect. There's a lot of things you can do here. Um, just know that if you need to split a clip, it's Control shift d Okay, now let's say I'm done adding a ton of effects to this. Um, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. Uh, nobody knows what I did within these past 30 minutes, but I've added a ton of needless effects that make this slightly pretty, I guess. And now it's time to render our composition. Composition is just another fancy way of saying video. Um, like I said, you first want to take your yellow sliders and highlight the entire area you want to render. So I've chosen the entire clip. Then I'll go to Composition, Make Movie. You can check your render settings. Usually you want best and full. You can go to your output module. Um, I usually choose AVI and uh, lossless. I usually don't want to compress it because I end up putting most of my rendered compositions back into Sony Vegas so I can preview it there and combine it with all of my other compositions. Um, all of these color settings are fine for basic needs. Title the clip whatever you want. Mine's called Post AE and then just hit that beautiful render button and it'll take however long your computer needs to render. Okay, so you've put your videos inside After Effects. You've made it all pretty by changing the properties or using some crazy effects that After Effects has built in. Uh, I would see other AMV logs on how to do those crazy effects. And now what you have is this video called Post AE. Well, now I open up my Sony Vegas and I can take that clip post AE and just drag it into my timeline and typically I'll duplicate the music. That said, you can now see the pre AE version and the post AE version and see if what you've done has made a great difference. Not even the grass. <laughs>